Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, uh, imagine that you're looking for a new job. And in the process of looking through job advertisements, you see one that sounds something like this. XYZ Company, a global network with a rich history of reaching out to people in need, is looking for new applicants to join us in this exciting venture. You will receive hands-on experience and gain knowledge and wisdom from the finest teacher we've ever known. While working for us, You can expect to receive much worry and stress. A generous dose of overwhelming inadequacy. And a constant supply of self-doubt. You will be ridiculed by others. Given unsolicited advice from those who think they know better. And you will even die by losing your current sense of identity. Applications will be accepted on a rolling basis. However, we are also actively seeking out those who may not apply. Follow in the footsteps of some of the finest people who have served this company and set a path for others to follow after you. Benefits include a sense of purpose, vision of life beyond yourself, and a love beyond all measure. That's a weird job advertisement. Worry, stress, inadequacy, and self-doubt. And also, purpose, life beyond measure, and love. Would you go for it? Does this sound like something you'd be interested in? On the one hand, maybe not. But on the other hand, many people have already become a part of this company. Because it's known as parenthood. (laughs) On this Father's Day, we celebrate all of those father figures in our lives who have made the hard choice to be a part of parenthood. We give thanks to all of those dads who reach out to kids in need and help them grow. They've received hands-on experience and have gained wisdom from some of the finest teachers around. Time and failure. They've been ridiculed and have received unsolicited advice. And yet they continue to do their best. Parenthood is hard work. But as many people say, it's also the most rewarding experience of your life. It's full of worry and stress and inadequacy and self-doubt but also a sense of purpose. Life beyond yourself and love beyond measure. So thank you to all of you dads who have chosen to do this. And yet this job advertisement for XYZ Company could also be for something else in our lives. Could also be for the life of discipleship. Turns out there are actually a few really good similarities between being a parent and being a disciple. I want to touch on three of them. First, you are the one who is sent out to care for others. Today's gospel reading begins by telling us all the things that Jesus himself was doing. He went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. All right, so Jesus was doing a lot. He was keeping busy. But it also says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus sees people in need and knows that they need someone to care for them. So he turned to his disciples and said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
In other words, there's a lot of good work to be done and lots of good fruit to harvest, but not many people want to do it. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. And then, in the very next sentence, Jesus gives his disciples authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness, just as he himself had been doing. So in other words, Jesus didn't tell them to pray that he would continue to do all the work by himself. He didn't even tell them to see a need in the world and then pray that somebody else would do it. No, he told them to pray, and then he sent them to do it. Good dads don't pass off their responsibilities to, quote, somebody else. Yes, some men try to do this. Sometimes they don't take their role as a loving parent very seriously. But loving dads maturely step into this role. Maybe they were actively seeking the position, or maybe it just came upon them. But even if they feel overwhelmed and insecure and scared, they do it knowing that they are the ones who are called to serve this way. It's the same thing with discipleship. As disciples, we can't pass off our responsibilities to somebody else. The excuses of, oh, I'm too old, or, oh, I'm too busy, or I'm too tired, or whatever, none of those excuses hold up. Jesus doesn't buy any of them. He is calling you to do this. Why? Because he trusts you. <clears throat> that has to mean something, right? Even if you don't trust yourself, even if you feel inadequate, Jesus still trusts you. And he is still right there by your side. Even when you can't rely on yourself, you can always rely on him. So that's the first similarity between being a parent and a disciple. You are the one who is sent to care for others. Second, when you do this, you might be famous or you might be anonymous. Either way, you still play an important role. Right? In our world today, there are plenty of people who are famous. Celebrities, athletes, musicians, right? whoever. And sometimes they're famous as parents. Right? Like sometimes the media will not only tell stories about them, but stories about them and their kids. There are even some people who are famous because they write parenting books for others to read. There are some people who make videos about parenting hacks that go viral. And then there are the rest of us. who barely seem to make it day by day. We don't measure success by how many people read our books or how many people view our videos, but by whether our kids are healthy and safe when they go to bed each night. Discipleship is like that. In the next part of this reading, we hear the list of the names of the 12 disciples. Now, without looking at that list... How many of the 12 could you name? You can probably think of the fishermen, right? Peter and Andrew and James and John. You probably remember Thomas because of that famous doubting scene. You probably remember Judas since he's the one who betrayed Jesus. There's six. That's half of them. 
What about the other half? Do you remember their names? Do you remember their professions or their life stories? Do you remember any key moments from their lives or how Jesus called them? Probably not. But that's okay. Because the Bible doesn't even tell us much about the rest of them other than their names. Right? We don't know the profession or call story of Bartholomew or James, son of Alphaeus or Thaddeus or the rest. So some of Jesus' disciples have become famous and some not. But all of them still had the same call to tell people about Jesus. So whether you are a household name or your name is only known to your household, it's okay. Because you still have the same calling to You are called to love people in the name of Jesus. That's it. Now, it'll play out different ways in different people's lives, and that's okay, but that's still the call. So maybe you're a famous celebrity, or maybe nobody outside your little circle knows about you. Either way, you still matter. Jesus is still using you to make a difference in this world. So that's the second way that being a parent and a disciple are so. You are the one who's sent to care for others, whether people know about you or not. And a third way that they're similar is that they are both really, really hard but also really, really rewarding. New parents enter into parenthood completely naive and unaware of what's coming. You have no idea all the challenges that will come your way. Your entire life changes. You can remember what things were like before kids, but it feels like another lifetime ago. But you also know you wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Why is that? Why do people enter into this really hard life of parenthood and yet they wouldn't give it up for anything? Because we love our kids. Love makes us do ridiculous-looking things sometimes. And parenthood is a great example of that. When Jesus sends his disciples out to share his love with others, he makes it really clear that this is going to be a hard life for them. He says, see, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. People will hand you over. People will betray one another. People will even be put to death. Right? Discipleship is clearly not for the weak. Nor is parent. But, even if you feel weak, Jesus gives you the strength and love as you go along. Yes, you may never feel like you completely know what's going on. You will continue to have fear and self-doubt and confusion. But Jesus is still using you to make a difference in people's lives. It's about his strength, not yours. So today, we give thanks for all of those parents especially those dads who love their kids with the love of Jesus. I don't care how old you are or how old your kids are. 
You continue to love them through all of the stresses and the worries. And your kids are changed because of it. And even if you're not a parent, Jesus still trusts you to share his love with others in other wonderful ways too. So no matter where you are in life, don't count on yourself to do it all. Because you can't. Instead, count on Jesus to make a difference through you. Because the job of disciple is already yours. Thank you for sharing his love with others. In the name of the one who calls us, empowers us, and sends us to serve, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.